body called up from the West Coast swing yet? No, it's not. <laughs> I am trying to still figure out what time it is and I'm getting, yeah, I'm getting. 2.16. Well, it's like lunchtime, yeah. West Coast time and not quite dinner time here. I don't know. It's, uh, it was really rough going back and forth for three weeks, but I love the West Coast. Um, I just, the jet lag thing is, is real. Right. Now, you said that you came back and forth. Was that to see Abby and Alex? And yeah, it was. So, so, yeah, going out on the West Coast is, is tough, and I would prefer to stay out there, but I don't want to miss, miss out on that family time. So I came back and forth to be back home and be dad and be a husband and do all the things that uh, are normal. <laughs> so I'd come home and uh, be normal for three days and then hop back on a plane and go back out to the West Coast. So. Right, and I, one of my favorite interviews that you've ever done was you were sitting in the carpool line taking Alex and Abby to, <laughs> to school. Yeah, to we, uh, Mom. I do, I try when I'm home. I'm only home three days a week, so I try and get as much time in as I can with the kids. And so I uh, get up in the morning, have breakfast with them, and get them off to school. All right, well... And then obviously you have to go to your day job. So let's yep. get in a little bit into racing. You're five races in with SHR. How is the fit working for you? Uh, it's awesome. I mean, I'm having so much fun uh, driving fast race cars, running up front, being competitive, uh, being in contention to, to you know, run in the top ten. It's, uh, it's everything that I thought it was going to be. And I'm having so much fun with this group of guys that I have on the ten team and, and everybody at SHR. Um, they've really welcomed me in from day one, and it's been such such an amazing, um, you know, opportunity for me to, to walk into a shop like that that's so accomplished and so established, and and to fit right in. It's it's been a lot of fun. And I know that you always say that you and Johnny have this great chemistry. How does racing kind of change that chemistry? Actually being in the garage and working together. Well, it, it, it certainly um, changes the dynamic of our friendship for sure. We, we've been friends for a long time, and uh, you know we're both young and, and similar in age, and we have similar interests. We both enjoy cycling, so we've we've been out on the road and, and riding bikes together, and, and we've been friends since the DEA, DEI days uh, back in 2006, 2007 for me. Um, so going on 10 years, but. When you put us together in a working environment where you know there's uh, there's you know expectations um, and goals, it, it certainly changes things. But the the beauty of that is that we do have that that friendship and that connection from before that just kind of helps get us off on the right foot. And we can talk pretty openly with each other, and and we can be pretty direct with each other. Um, and the fun thing is, is we're, we're both after the same goals. We just want to go and, and run good. You know, it's not about, um, you know, whose fault is, you know, why are, why are we not running the way we need to run? It's just right. really like, what, what's the problem and how do we fix it? And, and, you know, he's bought in, our engineers are bought in, the whole team um, really thinks about us as, as one group. And that's, uh, that's, that's, a, that's a fun environment to be in. Right, and obviously the Daytona 500 didn't end the way that you wanted it to. And how do you take the expectations that you had for the start of the season and build upon what happened in the Daytona 500? Well, I think you got to look at the positive. I mean, you have two choices in that moment. You can either look at the negative and be consumed by the negative, um, or you can look at the positive. And, and for me and, and for our team, uh, I feel like we, there was so much positive around that weekend mm -hmm. um, that – I didn't want to let that last half of the lap define the rest of our season. I mean, that, that would be foolish for us to do that. So uh, it was it was it was a great start to the year. You right. know, if you would have told us that we would have went down to Daytona and and had a car that was capable of winning the Daytona 500 and and would have finished 11th, um, we probably would have thought that that was okay. <laughs> you know, to kick off the year, we would we everybody wants to win, but um, you you know you gotta you gotta have uh, realistic goals and so we wanted to look at the positive we, we ran up front we got Smithfield and Ford uh, you know mm -hmm. tons of TV coverage <laughs> and uh, got our relationship with SHR kicked off on the right foot and I really feel like that has helped kind of build the momentum into the rest of this you know first part of the season to where we're, we're showing up to the racetrack we got speed we're running good and, and we're running in the top 10 and, and it's it's fun it's it's a completely different um, environment and a different uh, style of racing uh, when you run up there and you're competitive and, and you're running up in the top ten. 
Um, now we're going to take some fan questions. So Matt Schroeder asked, what is the biggest thing you've learned from your teammates at SHR so far? You know, I, I, I was asked that question uh, this weekend in California, and, and I kind of thought for a minute to really answer that question truthfully rather than just spatting off some <laughs> PC answer. But, the rehearsed um, answer, that's right. But I think the one thing that I've learned the most um, is just that all three of my other teammates do something different. Like, there's no perfect mold. There's no, like, this is the way it has to be done. And that, for me, is, is, is eye-opening. Um, obviously, Kevin Harvick has had a ton of success. <laughs> so, successful, um, yeah. so if you're going to look at one guy, you, you would look at Kevin. But the reality is, is that the other, the other guys, Clint and Kurt, have had a lot of success. They've run good there. They've won races. They've, you know, they've qualified on poles. And when I look at you know, their approach, the way that they want the car to drive, uh, their driver data, that they all want something different. Um, even if it's slight, it, it's, it, you know, it makes them who they are in the race car. And for me, that's been comforting to know that I can just go there and be me. And I can tell Johnny and, and my guys on my team, you know, this is what I feel like I need out of the race car, and they go to work on it. All right. Well, we can see what you go to work on that race car on Sunday in Martinsville. We wish you the best Thank of luck. You. Thank yeah. you for being here. All right. We'll go to the paper clip and try and get a grandfather <laughs> That's clock. That's right.